Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm Mai Chow. And thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing all right. Mai Chow, it's always good to see you. What's going on with you? Uh, nothing too much, really. Not, definitely nothing I can think of on the food side. That's uh, quite all right. You're just here to catch up and, you know, just, uh, yeah, see what's going on. I mean, what is it? So I watched Peter Pan Goes Wrong last night. So that was fun. Tell uh, me about it's a farce. that. Um, it's about a, it's a play within a play, basically, uh, where everything goes wrong. It's a community theater, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. that does a, uh, that they do a, a community production of Peter Pan Goes Wrong, or Peter Pan, sorry, but everything goes wrong. Okay. And it was a lot of, if it's, if you've heard a play that goes wrong, it's the same uh, production company as that interesting was. okay you you did yeah, mention really that funny. from a previous you know um thing that we talked about you you, you did bring that uh, up i think you I had i thought you had watched it uh um when you were in new uh, york yes that's okay. right we did watch the play that goes wrong in new york when we were there okay that's right but okay. that was like the play that goes wrong way older lots of other people that are doing it but this this one right now is the original cast really Okay. So yeah, the Peter Pan goes wrong. Uh, with the uh, with the addition of Neil Patrick Harris. Okay. Nice. What's his uh, role over there? Uh, he's one of the he's a narrator because they've been swapping out narrators for different people. Or for the first couple of weeks, it was Bradley Whitford. Uh, last week it was uh, Daniel Day Kim. Mm -hmm. And then they actually extended the run a week. Like this this week is the extension, and it's uh, Neil Patrick Harris as the narrator do you know why they switch him out is there a certain reason um i don't know why exactly but the original production like on bbc way back in 2017 i think was they had somebody they had a famous uh person as their narrator as well i forgot who it was but it was a it was a knighted actor mm, okay yeah interesting so is it something you'd uh, recommend to you know to watch yeah. The knighted, yeah. Oh, definitely. Okay. Hold on. Yes, I did mention the knighted part. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. I have no idea who he is, but in the British uh, entertainment industry, I'm sure somebody does. I'm sure more people do. You're talking about the, uh, wait, the narrator? Of, yeah, from the, B the original BB BBC production. Okay. All right. But yeah, that's why in this case they had three famous actors as narrators. Got it. They have to try to, um, I don't know, keep up, uphold the quality, I guess. Um, I, I guess. But it's okay. good. It's funny. Very funny. Neil Patrick Harris it was more involved out of all the other narrators they had. Like he was more, he was do, he played a, a secondary role as one of the pirates as well. Mm -hmm. None of the other narrators did that. So he was more involved in the production as a whole. Oh, interesting. So it's really cool. I wonder what it takes to kind of get you prepped, you know, um, and ready for something like that. I don't know if it was a like a quick turnaround or like you know last minute thing. It have to be mm. kind of. I don't know about last minute because they didn't yeah. announce it a couple weeks ago. But at the same time, Daniel Day Kim's last performance was Sunday, and then Tuesday is Neil Patrick Harris. So I don't know how. I don't know what preparation goes into that. Yeah. But enjoyable, nevertheless, obviously it pulled it off. Um, yeah, and the, the differences that they do between the different narrators are great. Like Neil Patrick Harris specifically, he's doing a lot more. I don't know how to explain it, but he's like falling more on purpose, like rolling around when he's doing stuff. Like, you know, he's... I don't know what kind of performance you'd call it. Okay. But he's no stranger to the stage, obviously. And, oh, uh, definitely not. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to have to check it out again. That's uh, Peter Pan goes wrong. Uh, what in the Amundsen uh, Theater? Amundsen Theater. How long but is it uh, running till? The Sunday. Oh, sorry. Right. Okay. Yeah. Again, this was just a one week extension. Mm, let's see. It's really funny. The writing is so good. Is There's it? lots of improv. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. Like it's very slapstick kind of humor. Yeah. But I like that. Okay, nice. Nice. Um 
people check it out. Very cool. Yeah, it's a gr- it's a really funny show. Yeah, from the creators of the play that goes wrong. Peter Pan yeah. goes wrong. Maybe they just do this whole series of things that go wrong. Basically, they also have a it was a BBC show, I guess, but now it's on YouTube. Of it's called the Goes Wrong Show. It's, it's like thirty okay. minutes. Yeah. Like 30 minute episodes of basically the same thing, but just with different scenarios. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Like episode one was a Christmas, like a Christmas carol kind mm-hmm. of movie uh, or a Christmas special, I guess. Episode two was called the pilot, not the pilot. Like it was actually about a World War II pilot in, in an alternate history universe. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. So it, it's really funny. It's got really dumb humor, but I'm yeah. here for it. Yeah, that's uh, that sounds real fun. So, very cool. Yeah, we'll uh, have to check it out. Uh, I think by the time if this goes out on time, people will have uh, I think like two days to figure it out to get out there. But <laughs> that's yeah. enough time, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I don't know the overlap um, of our non-existent audience. Um, so I thought, honestly, I thought this was going to happen next week, but I guess I missed the week. Mm. Gotcha. It's fine. It's all That's good. perfect. People have the opportunity, potentially. Yeah. Okay. Just in case anyone actually listens and is interested, Hadestown is coming back in October for two weeks only. Uh huh. So you have to look into that as soon as you can because I understand that's not that, gonna be here that long. I understand that's very a very popular um production. Yeah. It, it was it was the last best uh musical Tony winner before the pandemic. Mm. And what's the uh, kind of the premise of that of that one? Uh, it's basically if you're into if you know Greek mythology, it's the story of Orpheus and Eurydice, the guy who goes into hell to come to try to get his wife back from Hades. Oh, sure. Or not his wife, but his love interest back from yeah. Hades, but fails at the last second because of a moment of weakness, kind of thing. I see. Well, you just need to watch Hercules. I think that'll sum it up just fine. Basically, you know, sure. That one. <laughs> Hercules is definitely exactly what I was thinking of when when right. I was watching it. That's how I'd visualize it, you know. Yeah, I actually when it was here last time, I actually took Tomo to see it. She okay. said it was okay. The cast was okay, but the music is really good. I actually really like the music. So well, you know, that. it's hard to impress Tomo with anything, really. So literally, yeah. Poor Renji. <laughs> <laughs> Look, mom, I got straight A's. Oh, good. I mean, Do it's, it again next time. I know it's right. It's like yeah. it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So what? Okay. Great. Good for you. Damn it, Tomo. Please. But that's coming back, um, pretty soon, right? Yeah, I think the first week of October. Okay. So if anyone, if people are interested, there, it's a short window. There you go. So if you miss out on um, play it goes wrong, you can try to catch Hades Town. I mean. Yeah. If you want. Sure. Yeah. All right. Good. Um, yeah. But uh, as far as um, food stuff goes, mm-hmm. yeah, I've been um, making my way around and uh, there are a few places I wanted no, to. Right. <laughs> I, that's, that's just a habit now. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, sorry. There are a few places I wanted to um, highlight. Um, one of which is uh, in the farmers market, the original farmers market. Um, oh, on third. Yeah, yeah. As you know, that's just kind of a uh, kind of a well-known uh, spot of a lot of different types of places, groceries, restaurants, and you know things like that. Um, mm-hmm. But one particular spot I wanted to bring up was a uh, a new stall that. Um, had opened up of, oh. uh, yeah, of a, uh, of a place that serves, uh, burgers and, you know, me, um, you know, it's a important food well, group, major food groups. Yes. So I thought I'd, um, pay a visit. So this is a spot called, um, thick burger and that's thick with two C's in this case. As um, it should be actually. So I, I don't know the exact story. Um, but I, I have followed them on and off um so i think in the last couple of years they were actually a pop-up out here and i had tried them out at least once they were over on the on the west side and 
um, as the name kind of implies, they serve out um, uh, burgers and they're not your smashed burgers or anything like that. They're actually um, like thicker patties. And take a look here at their Instagram page and you can, you know, uh, take a look at what they've got to offer. But um, yeah, they, they serve out these burgers. And I think for a while they were kind of going back and forth. Um, they were out in like, uh, like Atlanta, Georgia for a while. And oh, they would wow. make uh, visits out here. But uh, through some, um, some great, I don't know, some great effort, they actually were offered a spot um, at the original farmer's market. So um, I don't remember the stall that they um, took over, but uh, oh. I think I just happened to remember it's stall 126. So if you or someone happens to remember what used to be there, um, that'd be good to know. Maybe a Google search would do me good. But um, yeah, but I, I just uh, ordered a, a simple menu, a thick burger uh, and in an order thick fries, which are just kind of thick cut fries. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, I think they're still in this, um, kind of, at least when I went, they're going, going through the still kind of soft opening phase. Um, but if they hadn't already, they kind of ramped up to grand opening and, and yeah, they're, they're there, they'll be there. So, um, I think it's a good, uh, place if you want to uh, stop by for a burger there are a few other you know stalls and uh that sell burgers as well um but um this is something that i think focuses um squarely on on burgers so yeah i mean it was a it it's kind of a nice change for some that you know we've seen a lot of the smash burgers we talk about the burgers mm -hmm. we talk about are a lot of smash burger style um so this might be a nice change and uh I mean, yeah, can't complain. It was a great, um, great taste, great burger, great flavor. Um, and yeah, I can't really, uh, can't really complain. I'm glad it's a welcome addition to, um, to the farmer's market. So, um, if you guys are out there, I mean, pay them a visit. It's, uh, really, uh, really happy that they're out there. So that's, um, that's thick burger. Um, the next spot I wanted to um, to mention and to also um, give a, an important announcement that um, I have uh, gone vegan. I'm sorry? <laughs> you Impossible. <laughs> um, maybe not quite vegan, but technically, you know, I embrace um, vegan... <laughs> vegan... Uh, lifestyle and uh <laughs> you do not you never did you never will well this um this might change your mind uh this next spot i want to talk about is um is a a pop-up uh called shell's pizza company and um i've uh i think i i've heard about them from a few places but uh, a friend of mine jose reminded me recently uh, or remind, yeah, reminded me about them, um, put me, put them back on my radar. And, um, I think they are a pop-up that came up as a result of the, of the pandemic. And, um, they make a, uh, pan style pizza. So think Detroit style. So, um, kind of that, that kind of taller, thicker, uh, you know, dough, sourdough or, or that type of, with a crispy edge, you know, uh, in a square pan. Um, but I think what it's kind of, they, they've kind of set themselves apart here is a term that they've put together called Hokkaido pan pizza. So you see this Japanese influence of this, uh, Hokkaido style, you know, the milk bread that you get right from mm -hmm. Japan and implementing that in, uh, in this pan pizza. So, uh, well, I don't think there are any complaints about a good Detroit style pizza, good pan pizza already i think um uh i don't know this approach with uh hokkaido as they call it was um i don't know as i think put them got people's attention i think they managed to achieve a uh, still that great rise and texture um of a good pan pizza 
um, while not incorporating, you know, those seemingly staple ingredients. So I'm very impressed. I don't know. I mean, look, I, um, I enjoyed, I enjoy this. this. I think this was the item that, that I tried. It's, um, the original, like kind of an original recipe, uh, the special. So, you know, uses that Hokkaido and then you've got a cheese blend, um, some bacon, pepperoni, uh, onion, jalapeno, pineapple, serrano, and some pizza, you know, some zesty pizza sauce as they, as they have it. <laughs> okay. Um, but so anyway, I ordered that. So they, they serve out of this kitchen out, um, uh, kind of out in South, South LA area. And, um, it's actually kind of a shared space. Well, it's a, you know, it's a large building, a collection of, you know, set separate of uh, different kitchens that, uh, different vendors and, um, restaurants will, will prepare and cook out of. And then, um, in this case, you can stop by there to pick up your order. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very interesting, uh, take on, on a pan pizza and, um, it's quite good. I got to say. Yeah. So, um, Hey, so like I said, um, see, I'm not a, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with it. You know, the, uh, the vegan lifestyle, right? So you'd go, I mean, sure, sure. So you'd go back then, try to or have it again. I, I would definitely try it again. I'd definitely go okay. back. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Now, granted, again, uh, I just say that, but again, you, you, you heard me list off the ingredients, you know, there's bacon and pepperoni on there, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, they got a, they got a nice, they got a mushroom, uh, they got a veggie, they got, um, they got a Sicilian side. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's great. So. Mm -hmm. Worth going. Give Worth it a trying try. at least. Give it a try. Yeah. Okay. Um, next spot, uh, to mention is, uh, you know, TikTok is like a wealth of, or a <laughs> uh, rabbit hole or something. Yeah. I don't know, but <laughs> in this case, I think it was, a. Uh, it was a wealth of knowledge for the better. Um, okay. There's a lot of, you know, account, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of food accounts out there, a lot of food content. Uh -huh. That is true. Um, and uh, I forget from which I, I have to look up, uh, I'd have to share which one I, I found it from, but from one of them, they highlighted this place um, that's, I think, originally out in, south la area but um there is a location out in carson it's a burger restaurant called fresh and meaty burgers and um as the name implies they are fresh and meaty burgers it's a burger okay. restaurant right well <laughs> in case you didn't catch that but um yeah i mean i think uh um these are also like kind of thicker you know, burgers, like larger. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, with here, I think they serve beef and they also serve turkey burgers, which they're actually quite mm -hmm. known for. But, um, oh. you know, with me, I just got the, I got the beef burger. So, um, yeah, they're, they were larger. They were, um, it was quite filling. You got to say, um, okay. especially with a side Good. of fries and, but yeah, it was a decent burger. So I, I, and they've been around for quite a while. So surprisingly, so I think, um, you know, just happy to kind of find out and probably, um, try it out again, but that's uh fresh and meaty. Uh, and okay. then lastly, I wanted to kind of revisit a, uh, a place or just bring up again, a place that, um, I have visited, um, quite a bit. Um, and we've talked about this place before. Um, it's a, uh, it's a restaurant called pick your plate and they're out in uh, Hawthorne. Uh, it's a Filipino restaurant and, mm -hmm. um, it's very casual fast food style. So as you know, fast food style with Filipino is kind of the cafeteria style, right? You can, um, you 
and you line up, you know, along a pane of glass, you know, with a, a line of different dishes laid out behind the glass and you just kind of pick the dishes that you want. And, um, and then they'll, you know, uh, ladle it on a, you know, plate and a large container or something, and you can enjoy it there or, or take it with you. So we've been coming here for lunch, um, for, you know, um, on days we're working, we're at work and, um, it's, uh, been a, just whenever we come, it's a great, well, great experience. Um, the, uh, the owners or, you know, whoever's serving there is always very kind and very welcoming, both regular and new faces. And there are definitely a lot of regulars. I don't think they'd, if we didn't go, I don't think they'd be hurting for business. Let's put it that way. I mean, they, um, they kind of found their, uh, their niche, but nice. they, um, and on top of that, the food they serve is um, actually very good. I mean, not that I'd be surprised, but it's, it's actually quite good home style cooking, you know? So sometimes there's usually going to be like, um, you know, your staples, I think that you'll always, you'll typically have there. I think a lot of things that a lot of times we'll usually see like the, uh, the adobo, they have pork adobo and chicken adobo. Um, but then they'll also, you know, th- depending on the day or the week, they'll, they'll serve out different items. They'll cook sometimes some items that were kind of unexpected, uh, not, um, that I, I wouldn't have expected to be in the menu. Like for example, today, um, they served, uh, they actually served gumbo and, uh, oh, nice. you've <laughs> just been itching for that. <laughs> I think. <laughs> How actually, convenient. I, but actually, you I once didn't. more inserted your <laughs> agenda into your lunch with whoever you're with. Well, it's n- it's not like I um, well, everyone picks their own. I mean, it's not like uh, I'm I'm buying for the whole thing. You, you pick your own plate, but and and to be but honest, at the same time, was mm-hmm. it your suggestion of a place? Well, of course. Um, uh huh. But it's not like I knew that they were serving it out there. Um, you know that day. You, you don't know what the menu is. We don't know what the menu is I until still we still don't believe you. I know you don't. <laughs> Just um, so convenient. And surprising actually to your surprise, I um I I actually didn't order the gumbo. Um I, a, a coworker of mine did and um you know I tried a little bit of it and I mean I I, I could see. barely try it because he he finished the whole thing. I mean he really enjoyed it, you know. Um you convinced him to try it so you can try it with He tried it on his own. I, I didn't no, have no, to no, impose no. my own views and <laughs> not explicitly but implicitly it was there's there. some sub, subconscious yeah subliminal yeah. messaging or something too uh probably yeah i wouldn't be surprised uh, I'd, i wouldn't doubt it so um but you know so so like i said you'll have some dishes there that kind of just surprise you to be honest um but things like and things like uh other you know common uh or well-known dishes like uh, chicken apertata or, or bistec or, um, you know, uh, sinigang, you know, things like that. A lot of staples, a lot of comfort foods. Um, and then, yeah, but they, they are rotating this menu and, um, I'm just quite happy to, you know, um, see them there and they're small operation. I, I think like the building it's, I mean, the space itself probably doesn't hold more than like 30 people, you know, and that's kind of a tight fit. And, um, and there are days like, for example, uh, there, there's like a day of the week when they serve out, um, the lechon, the, the pork, the roasted oh. pork. And, um, that, that day there's almost always a, a large line, you know, people lining up, um, for that. And so we had on days when we happen to be there on that day, we want to make sure that we get there like either you know as soon as they open or i mean we don't we we don't like wait in line or anything we're not it's not that kind of place where we need to do that but i know that if we do get there a little later um there's already a line you know and so we do have to wait through that so if we get there you know earlier then we have a better chance you know at least to brave the line and like i said um you know we're there i think fairly often enough where they uh, are friendly with us. They recognize us. Um, and, uh, and there are other people there. There are other regulars there that we've kind of recognized as well. So that the problem that have definitely been, you know, going there, um, for much longer. So, um, 
I thought that was uh, quite nice. So it's nice to support, you know, local business and also, you know, just one of those places that, you know, serve, uh, serves really good food and has really good, um, hospitality. So, um, that's uh pick your plate out in, um, Hawthorne. So yeah. Anyway, um, I wanted to, uh, keep talking about some food. I hope that's okay. And, um, is there anything else to discuss? I, ever? I don't think so. At least here. I, I don't think so. <laughs> but, um, speaking of, you know, more food, I want to thank you and thank you to, you know, our audience, I guess, as you recall, you know, they are our, our few and only fans, honestly, that join us. Um, every time we talk about some of our food adventures, these local spots and pop-ups with good food and good people. So uh, thank you again to our few and only fans. So um, without you, we would not be here. Uh, I'm so probably- sorry. <laughs> um, today, we wanted to. I wanted to kind of get into... Um, a food group that we all know too well, um, and that, uh, I've had the, uh, the pleasure of, um, exploring a little more recently. Um, and that is, uh, the food group of, uh, of barbecue. And, um, certainly when we talk about barbecue here, we've, um, we've discussed, uh, in the context of, uh, Texas style barbecue. And that's what we are um, coming up with again. So um, I uh, had the chance to visit um, the city of Dallas um, recently. And the only reason why I would go to Texas, um, as it as it seems as of late, is, is for barbecue. Um, I, I really don't think there's really any other compelling reason for me to go out there. Not that it isn't not not because it isn't a, a a fun destination to be at. I mean, we've been to Austin, right? Um, and I visited as well on my own. I visited Houston, um, and actually, I was in Dallas um, uh, in a previous visit. Not you know back. I think it was in 2019. Um, visiting with uh, yeah with uh, our good friend Abe Delgado and some other friends there, and. Um, while, while we were visiting, we, we took a, a day trip kind of visit out to Dallas Fort Worth area. And we visited several spots out there. I'd listed here, um, just to recall, there was, uh, Derek Allen's, um, Panther city, Zavala's, um, some very good names. There were several other places we visited while we were uh, on that trip, um, outside of Dallas Fort Worth, but Um, those were the places in that area while, while we were there. And, um, you know, I just want to start by saying that it's definitely, but I think I've mentioned this before. It's definitely better to, um, enjoy barbecue with other people to try (laughs) to tackle it alone is, is an endeavor in itself. Um, and you'll see why as, as we kind of show you and talk about some of the places that I visited, Um, but yeah, if, if you do tack it alone, um, it better be because you, you do have, um, the, the appetite, uh, and enthusiasm left, you know, there is no less there is, you cannot need the beef rib in addition to all the other meats that you're getting. Right. We'll get to that. All right. (laughs) Slow your roll. Okay. (laughs) But. Oh, I guess that's been a problem this trip. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move right along with this. <laughs> oh, no. So in planning this trip, um, this this is definitely one of those trips where it's really f- um, like it's food first. Not not that the other trips haven't been food first or whatever, but um, this is where like all the f- everything I do on this trip really revolves around um these I mean, food, these food places. Every trip you go, come on now. Yes, but more so this because it's in other possible. because in other trips it's like, oh yes, I would also like to like visit this, uh, this non food place, right? This attraction or this show or whatever. But in this Probably case, it's, you're with us. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you're in Austin, so you're there's, there's there's some influence there, some peer pressure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're saying otherwise, I would just go all all out. Yeah, on a... all food all the time. If okay. like if you were in Austin by yourself instead of uh -huh. when we went, right? There would be no hike or uh -huh. walk, as it were. Uh -huh. right. There'd be no any extracurricular activities, just food and mm -hmm. recovery time. That's a good point. Yeah. This in this case. Um, it it was it was food first yeah i mean i found night good things to do fun things uh not food related um but that came like well after the well an afterthought okay well after the yeah, shouldn't have come at all yeah it's <laughs> time you could have spent getting more food yeah what a waste but like you said um there is a period of recovery that needs to happen some rest there and i'll talk about that i mean it was Okay, let's just go into this. <laughs> oh boy! Um, but in planning this trip, um, you know there are some places that there are several places that have that have come up uh, since my last visit, uh, either that have already been established and and just you know just come to attention, or you know just places I've I've um, I've heard about and just have wanted to visit. Um, and actually, there there is so much um, that unfortunately I, I didn't get to visit every single thing. Um, not as not out of uh you know uh not a lack of trying but just some in some cases the willpower is just <laughs> gets, um yeah so i don't know but texas broke you dallas broke you i don't know broke me but but it definitely pushes the limit i'll tell you that oh, you wow. know especially as a solo traveler so um but yeah so but as far as uh, these places, we're going to tackle a couple of the places um, that we visited, and I and just like um, the New Orleans trip, there's so much that we'll we'll have to probably save some for um, for another time. But I think these are some of the heavy hitters that we got to um, we got to enjoy and emphasize on heavy. Um, <laughs> so the first the first spot we want to talk about is a uh, restaurant called Cadillac Barbecue. So Cadillac. Uh, and these these places that we're going to talk about today uh, fall under uh, the uh, Texas Monthly Top 50 uh, list. And we kind of um, brought it up previously. You know, this is a list that's curated um, by some editors um, of Texas Monthly magazine, particularly um, a team headed by uh, Daniel Vaughn. And um, they update this list. I think you know, I, I think I did look into it. I think this list is supposed to be updated every two years. But yes, following um, the guidance of the 2021 list, um, this was the first stop. So one of these places, um, or again, part of the planning too, was knowing when uh, these places are open. Um, because at least from my experience with these, um, some of these spots, they might only be open for like, you know, three or three or four days out of the week, you know? Um, and with that, you know, they are open for only a certain number of hours and they might sell out before then. Um, so you kind of have to strategize where you want to go, um, based on the place's popularity and, you know, there's, there's that, yeah, kind of a factor of, um, knowing when to, to go because even if they're open for a certain set hours like they like they advertise 11 to 4 or whatever you know they might sell out before then or you might get there later and the line is still very long and you may not uh, get the food that you want they might have run out of certain things so um you know you need to know which spot you want to hit up and get there early or you know at, at a certain time that would work for you you know so you can get the you know, the best chance of getting the food that you want. Right. So, um, but this first spot is, um, I guess falls number six, uh, on the top 50. And this is, uh, Cadillac barbecue and they're out in Dallas. And, um, this was, um, so this was a spot that, that came to, to mind and they, um, they have quite an offering uh, I think they were only open for, I think I was lucky because, um, I don't think they were open. Oh man. I, I totally forgot their hours already, but they, they weren't supposed to be open necessarily. They only open 
for Saturdays, like on the first Saturday of the month or something like that. Let's see. I'm looking at the hours here. Yeah, look, they're only op- supposed to be open Thursday and Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like, what? But on their website, they also Oops. mentioned that they actually open on the first Saturday of each month. Is that and you knew that before you went, before you booked this flight or no? Yeah, I did. I did. I, okay. I, I found out about it, bef- you know, um, okay. when I, when I was planning this out. So, I mean, if I didn't, if I didn't get to try them out, I guess, you know, that's just the way it was. There are plenty of other places I could have, um, easily could have, vi- could have visited, but thankfully in this case, um, they, they, they were open, you know, this was over, yeah, that first week, weekend, the Labor Day weekend. So, um, yeah, they were open. So I, I definitely put them on there. So since that was the only day they'd be open, you know, while I'm there, then that's a priority, right? I need to, I need to hit them up. So, um, so, you know, as I'm planning, as I'm, you know, uh, since I'm like preparing myself, I'm like, you know, I don't know, I'm settling in, you know, right, flying in and getting settled and everything. Like, I'm just kind of planning, like anticipating what I'm, um, what I'm going to expect. And of course, like the number one thing that comes to mind, honestly, is just kind of reliving, uh, the line culture. Um, because I know with a lot of these places that the line is going to, um, it's going to matter. I mean, it's gonna, yeah, yeah, you're, you know, you snooze, you lose or something like you're, you're going to pay for not showing up early or on, you know, if you're on time, you're late. It's, it's one of those things, you know? So, um, but yeah, I arrived like around nine o'clock. They open at 10, right? So that's like an hour. Right. And I thought, nah, it's not that bad. Sometimes like, you know, there's certain restaurants, right. That, um, like for example, back in the day at Howland, right. We, um, they opened at a certain time and we knew that if we got there, like maybe an hour and a half early, we would wait that hour and a half to open, but we'd only have to wait like 15, 20 minutes, you know, to get our food. Right. Mm -hmm. So we spend all that time. Um, similarly, like that's kind of the trade-off you have here. How long are you waiting, willing to wait and how early are you willing to get there? So you can wait a certain time, um, and then wait for the, for that line in front of you to, you know, to clear up and whatever, to get your food. So in this case, there were about like 30 people ahead of me, um, already. And, um, the building, you know, could line, line up around. I, I think this is, Maybe an example. Um, I don't know if it's the best. I, there were other pictures. I think they're on my on my phone. I'd have to pull up. But this is kind of an example, you know. So this is a kind of a side of the building, and I was probably closer towards you know the the back um, at at the start. So all these people that are lined up and around the corner, about thirty people deep, you know. And it's cool. I want to just kind of jump in and say that you can see in this picture that there's a actually young young guy here that's um, providing like live music. I mean, like it's I don't know, it's Texas. Is it Texas way or something? Or <laughs> they they take their music pretty pretty seriously. But they got this uh, this guy here. He's um, he's like I don't know, like twelve or something. I think. Oh wow. Yeah, he's super young. Um, but he's got a really good voice. Really, he's playing good songs, good cover songs, and um, he's a real professional, honestly. So it really helped pass the time. People are giving him tips. People are, you know, obviously liking, you know, really into it. Um, but anyway, I get there. And so there's that many people. And then, um, by the time I think that they open, I think there's like another, easily another 20, 30 behind me, you know? And, um, so that line has just grown, probably doubled, you know, in length. So, um, you know, it's going to be a busy day. And again, the fact that they're only open the first, I mean, you know, as part of the schedule, first Saturday of every month, which is, uh, which is a very interesting take, um, you know, kind of tells you that this, uh, this is serious business, you know, no, they're not, these people aren't messing around. So, um, 
yeah, uh, someone comes out um, from the restaurant to just kind of give some announcements, just kind of give people a little idea of like what to expect, you know, line waiting, how, what to order. Uh, they usually have rotations uh, or specials that they rotate. Um, and we'll see some of that here um, pretty soon. But um, yeah, but but from the time they opened uh, to getting, you know, getting in line and um, waiting for all the other people, that was probably another, I'd say another hour, maybe hour, hour plus to um, to order and get your food. So, yeah, I mean, just like um, any other most any other like Texas barbecue restaurant that, you know, that we've been to at least, you know, um, you see that they cut, you know, they, they cut to order. So, um, as for the, uh, the plate itself and the platter, this is, um, this is what they, or this is what I ended up getting. Um, this is a plate of, uh, various meats and, um, the, I think part of, like I said, part of the challenge of tackling a uh, barbecue as a, a solo traveler, <laughs> solo diner, um, for me at least, you, you almost always have to get, uh, you know, what they call the Texas Trinity, right? Which is brisket, um, ribs and sausage, right? So those, those three, you can't, you can't do without, um, but on top of that, they had announced some specials for that day. And I'm not sure. I, I have to kind of take a, a deeper, maybe a deeper um, look, I guess, as to uh, what happens when someone says that you've got something on special or for a limited time or something. It does something to you, you know. Um, the McRib. <laughs> the McRib, exactly. Um, it's how they get you. It's how they get you. There's that, you yeah, know, it's scarce, the FOMO. Exactly. The FOMO, the scarcity, you know, and all that. So on special, they had a beef rib, a pastrami beef rib, mm -hmm. and pork steak. Uh, we'll get into those a little bit. Um, but that was that was a plate. So those so that was a total of five different proteins, right? Um, and then a couple of sides. We have some mac and cheese and some uh, coleslaw. Um, we see here some you know some of the uh, things like pickled uh, red onion and and pickles and other pickled vegetables here, um, and some dessert, which we'll I, yeah we'll see as well. But the um, this the is start, one plate. This is one from plate. One place. This is one plate from one place for one guy. Okay. For the first meal there. Please tell me you have cardio in your routine somewhere. Uh, Please tell me you're going to work cardio into your routine somewhere it's, at some point. Well, I drive a car. You have to drive a car throughout to get to where you need to go, right? That counts. Start walking places. <laughs> <laughs> At the very least, God damn. Well, let's go through this plate. Um, so the first we've got is is the brisket. So that's in this picture. It's here up on kind of the right side, kind of top right. It's one. It's about a third pound. So one slice, and that's slice of fatty brisket. Um, it was very. It was quite moist. Um, and it was. I'd say it's almost perfect. Um, I say almost because even though it, you know, has a good amount of fat, good amount of chew, um, there, w it was almost a little too chewy. Um, you know, oh. the f some of the fat, ha the fat had mostly rendered out. There was still some part here along, um, the bottom portion, I think that, um, may have needed to either cook a little longer or, you know, just something to, to tenderize it a little bit more. Um, but it was um, it was a strong start. I mean, like it was a good. I'm not knocking it because it's a it is a good slice. Okay. Um, the ribs were great, no complaints. Great flavor, you know. Um, with a good rib, you want um, you want a good chew to it. I mean, like there's great when it falls off the bone and all that and that and that thing. But 
there needs to be a little texture to it. So you can get a chew out of it. Um, it's, uh, it's a sign of a good rib. So um, no complaints there. And then they, uh, for the sausage, they offered a few different ones. Um, this was a jalapeno cheddar. It's a more mild um, kind of uh, heat. Um, but it's a good sausage too. Great snap. Great flavor. Nice and cheesy, you know, inside. Um, so, you know, with those three alone, I would have been fine. That would have been mm-hmm. more than... Sure. And then even with the sides and the dessert, that would have been perfect. Right. But so why did you order more? Because they were on special. Oh, what does that even mean? <laughs> it means exactly what I said. Um, so the, the next thing we wanted to talk about was the, um, the beef rib, uh, the pastrami beef rib. So the pastrami beef rib um, was an item on special. You can tell it's like brined. It's got this pink hue on there. You know, um, uh I'm going to tell you right now, um, it was good, but not as good as I thought I'd wanted it to be. It's um, only the because we're set too high because it was special. Maybe only. Yeah, uh, because the, the pastrami flavor really didn't come through as strongly in my case. Oh. I'm not saying that it wouldn't have come through for others, but I think in my case that, um, yeah, I, I was pink. just I just taste, you know, so there you go. Looks aren't everything right. You can brine something and, and um, it can take up that uh, that color. But, um, you know, just something just just kind of fell short, to be honest, on that beef rib. Um, and similar to the, the brisket, maybe some of that fat st- still needed to render out a little more. Um, the beef flavor was there, right? But the pastrami part of it was still... Um, somewhere to be found. So, um, but Hey, you know, I tried it and, um, and it was on special, so I had to get it right. Right. Please answer me. Okay. Uh, the last protein is the pork steak. So, um, pork steak's not something that we usually see here. Um, whether in, you know, some of the Texas, barbecue places we've tried or um just in this area it's not even as common an item in the texas um barbecue offerings usually um it might be a regional special or just yeah something they kind of do um as a one-off thing actually the most popular most well-known example at least for me is uh, the pork steak that they offer at snow's barbecue so um yeah the the your future wife right <laughs> uh the uh that's tootsie uh the pit master there she is known for uh, f- among the, the many other smoked meats is uh this pork steak so pork steak is um as the name kind of implies it's just think of a steak think i think they've kind of compared it to like a ribeye so maybe like a thicker cut meat um, with that marbling and that, you know, kind of nice uh, density there. Um, but in the form of pork. So, um, yeah, that's, that was in this view, you could kind of see it, um, here in this, this portion. Uh, I don't even know, this is, this is all out over the place, but, um, yeah, that's the pork steak right there. And then this is, uh, the portion of it that's, you know, it's cut into, so. Yeah, it's um, it's quite it's quite good. So, I had no real complaints. With that said, as I just mentioned, the best example I know is from Snows. Mm-hmm. So I should have just kept it that way. Oh, um, really? Not not that this wasn't um, good. Actually, it was it was great. I, I enjoyed it very much. But I'm just saying that. I would have been okay, right, with the, uh, with the three, right, with the three, <laughs> I would have been just fine with the three, but, um, it. that's From not the first place you already, you that's already just, messed up. that's just not the way things work, you know, um, I don't say I messed up, but it was, it was a bit ambitious, I will say. <laughs> 
So to, um, oh yeah, the sides though, the sides, um, this mac and yeah, cheese. Rice? No, no, it's, uh, it's coleslaw. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, but for the sides, we have the mac and cheese, which is like, they have the, the shell shaped noodles in a more creamy cheese sauce. Oh, oh, nice. It hits. I mean, like it's great. Uh, no complaints there. Nice creamy cheese sauce. Uh, a little peppery and yeah, it's it's a good it's a good uh, thing. I don't know. I I forgot if we discussed if there's a superior noodle for the mac and cheese. I mean, everyone we always default to the elbow, but is um is there in fact a superior noodle for um for mac and cheese? You have any and thoughts the shells. on this? Like these. Oh, okay. Because you can have like little, <laughs> little like pockets of cheese inside of a shell. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. More uh, surface area, right? To uh... yeah. Okay. And then a potential just like a potential cup of cheese in there. Yeah, yeah, little cups of there. Okay. Yeah. Good, get that. Um, and then we Why have the. Uh... No, I don't know. I was just, I was just thinking. Uh-huh. I, I don't really, I don't know if I have a, a go-to honestly, but um, that is a good thought. Um, and then the coleslaw, um, what is, it's a good coleslaw. I mean, it's, uh, it's a little lighter, more vinegary, um, Mm. but not so super intense. Um, so it's just a good way to kind of, you know, balance out all this, uh, all this protein. Um, and then to kind of round it all off, then there's a dessert as well. So they have this dessert. Um, yeah, I'm curious that they call the crack, the, uh, the crack crack yeah. cake. Yeah. So the crack cake is like, um, I think, you know, I'm looking, I was looking it up and it's there, there are recipes for a crack cake, which is like a bundt cake. Um, so if you know, you know, if you know that texture of a bundt cake, I, I don't know if it's necessarily that texture. It kind of is, but I think it's a little more moist than a bundt cake. I feel like there is a regional, um, dessert in, from St. Louis of all places called the ooey gooey cake, which, um, as the name implies, it's like a really wet, moist, you know, cake. Um, but it's, um, it's not, it's like kind of in the middle, you know, it's not, it's not, not as crazy, but. So it's um, not a trust lettuce. No, no, not, 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 not at all. Um, but it's got, uh, it's got great flavor. It's got, um, it's got this, you can see like on the top, like this kind of shattered, crispy, you know, top layer here, um, like with sugar and, and, and things like that. So it's, uh, it, it's a good cake. I mean, you could, it's a great way to help again, like kind of round out all the, the proteins that you've, uh, you've just consumed, including a, a pastrami beef, (laughs) uh, you know, and some pork steak on top of that. So. Um, An extra three pounds of meat. Yeah, basically. Well, yeah, because uh, it could be close. Um, because the 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 Trinity, the brisket, ribs, and sausage is probably close to a, a pound. And then the beef rib itself, you know, you can't you have to order the rib, yeah, right? A whole rib. Yeah. yeah. And so that averages with the bone would average like a pound and a half, two pounds, you know. Um, and and then the pork steak, it's half a serving of pork steak. So, but yeah, that'd be like close to half a pound. So in other words, you're dead. You know, right? <laughs> That's what I'm asking if you were doing cardio. Um, like I said, use a car, drive around and you call it a day. Um, anyway, but this bunt cake, yeah, it's really, just think of like a really intense, like, uh, like a yellow cake, right? You know, uh, but with like heavy on good, good amount of butter, you know, um, sugariness and sweetness in there. Um, yeah, I, it, it is, a. Uh, it's over the top. It's like an over the top bun cake, but, nice. um, yeah, I don't know. I think I've, I, I can't say I've had something like it. I, maybe I have, but it's just a nice, you know, addition to have on there. Make sure you're not dying. So, um, I think, but that was over at, um, Cadillac. So, you know, in and out, probably there about, let's see, from nine to about 11, maybe like two and a half hours or something like that, you know, um, from start to, to finish. So 
yeah, again, in this case, I enjoyed the meal overall. Again, the, the specials, um, I don't know. I guess I, I it was probably a case of the FOMO, but um, I can say that I tried it. And um, but I think from, you know, the 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 core, I guess the core meat, um, those were uh, those were great. And I think it, you know, there's a reason why they're there on the the top 50 or something on um on that. So that was uh that's pretty good. So and yeah, easily like even when uh I was you know leaving there was still a uh, a strong line. I mean like just oh, good. you know down down the building and all around the corner and everything. So it's um it's definitely a popular place. So can't go wrong there. Cannot go wrong. So, to be honest, I was already done by that first meal, but I had all, okay, but so I you finished it there, all that, that plate, all that. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. done. Okay. Yeah. And that, that put me over the top. I mean, I was, <laughs> I, I was done. I mean, like put me in the grave, you know, that whole thing. <laughs> and um, yet. There's and yet, more. And yet there's more. Okay. Um, I had, you know, my original plan. I literally, I had three places lined up for, for this day. Okay. So this was stop you were one. You to order that much from the, what, is it that much from every place? Huh? Well, we'll get to the next spot. I was, like oh. I said, this was already, this was already like, this already pushed me to my limit. Like I don't, I, I didn't want to, I don't know. It was going to be tough to try to brave through really anything else. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not a quitter. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I forged on actually. So I, um, I did have like three places lined up, but, um, I ended up going to this next spot, um, out in, um, in the area of Grand Prairie. And this is, a, a restaurant called Zavala's. And I did mention that earlier and Zavala's, uh, kind of lies uh, a little bit uh what direction west of dallas um not not quite exactly in the middle of fort worth and dallas but it's like kind of on route closer to dallas and um zavala's is also in the top 50 and i have visited them before um when i was uh visiting with abe and um, I decided I want to visit it again. Uh, the guy has a fascinating story. He's kind of had to overcome a lot of adversities. The the owner kind of had to overcome a lot of health issues and things like that. And um, but he's in 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 the end, he still made you know he's still around and he still made some great barbecue. And um, he's just a really energetic, uh, great guy. His name is Joe, I believe. And uh, yeah, you should try Zavala's. Um, so they're out in this small city called, um, uh, Grand Prairie. I don't know if the Google will help me, but that's just kind of a, yeah, look at their facade outside. Um, but I had the chance to try them out before, so I wanted to try them out again. And, um, I think I really, uh, yeah, because of my grand inaugural meal, um, I don't know. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really have admittedly a lot of space, I guess, to, uh, I wanted to make sure I still enjoyed a meal, uh, without hating myself. Um, Too but I, I know, but in this case, um, so I still, I did go and I did order something and this is what I ordered. This is what oh. you call a, a Tex-Mex plate. And the Tex-Mex plate or, uh, serves basically like two tacos um, served on flour tortillas with uh, the choice of, you know, whatever proteins they have on hand. So in this case, I ordered a taco with uh, beef cheeks and then another taco with um, something they call the almost carnitas, which is basically their pulled pork, but it's seasoned um, to like a carnitas flavor. So, um, yeah. And then you serve, they serve with beans and some, uh, what is that cheesy? I want to say it's hominy. That's it. That's all you got. Yeah, that was oh, it. Wow. 
but it was a sizable dish. Right. Um, those were larger tacos. And those mm. flour tortillas were, you know, were, were pretty good, you know, uh, not nice. your run-of-the-mill taco. I mean, they were nice and soft and, you know, it holds up to the uh, the meats pretty well. Yeah, I had to take my time. Even while I was there, I did finish this plate, but I did have to take my time. Started off with the beef cheeks. Um, beef cheeks were nice and tender and, um, you know, some people get turned off by beef cheeks because if they're prepared in a certain way, they might be too slimy, actually, that texture. But this was prepared really well, um, very tender and um, very intense beef flavor, um, just as I kind of remember them from uh, from the previous visit. Uh, so they were just as good. And then the uh, carnitas, the almost carnitas, uh, which is the pulled pork. So it's definitely got a pulled pork texture, but you can definitely taste like the carnitas uh, flavor in there. So, you know, we have great carnitas here. Um, many great examples of where to find good carnitas. Uh, but um, it was kind of nice to kind of see that um, brought over uh, in this, you know, um, in this kind of um, serving. So, yeah, I had no complaints. It's just that I was already dying. So I um, mm. wanted to Made sure I had a, I could say that I tasted something and still enjoyed a meal. And so, um, yeah, it was, uh, pretty good. It was, uh, it was a good meal. So, but honestly, after that, I was done. <laughs> that I, I, were you, were you though? I, you know, admittedly I was, I, um, okay. I had another place, you know, that I was gonna, I don't remember if it was a place that I, was going to revisit or first time, but, um, I just, I just couldn't, I, yeah, I was, uh, I was done. So I, I went back to my hotel and I just knocked out, um, <laughs> for the rest of the day. That was I think, all of day one. Yeah. I mean like the rest of that day, like I did wake up like later that day and then I, mm -hmm. I did some non-food things. So that's not uh, interesting. So, um, well, because I, I, that was it. I think I had hit my, to my limit, you know, um, I had to just kind of wait for the next, the next day. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. So the Can next, you say don't remember what the third place was going to be. Um, let me see. Ah, uh, there was a, um, there's a spot called bricks barbecue. Um, and th it's a new place, uh, or a place I hadn't been to. And uh, they're really uh, like a popular up and coming kind of, uh, mm. you know, restaurant. I think they recently got a brick and mortar. Um, so I was going to try them out. Um, but I, yeah, I just, unfortunately, I just couldn't. So I was, yeah. uh, I'll have All to right, try well, again next time. Next time. Yeah. Another reason to go. Yeah. Next time I'm going to bring you along with me. Okay. <laughs> and we're just going to conquer this together. I think we can definitely deal more da damage well, with this. We'll see. I think we I think we can do it. <laughs> I think if like if we if we shared what I had ordered for myself. Oh, we'd be fine. That would be the, that would be fine. Three, yeah. And we could yeah, we yeah. could visit all the places, you know. <laughs> come with Probably. relatively comfort like comfortably. That'd be fine. Yeah, I can see that. Um the next spot uh, we wanted to talk about um, is uh, this is in fact I guess the number one spot of the uh, Texas Monthly Top 50 and um, that comes at uh, number one with Goldie's and so Goldie's wow. is a restaurant there on the Fort Worth side and um, they opened in, in 2020 yeah just yeah. before the pandemic actually Crazy. and um What's very interesting about this restaurant, or at least the people that make it up, and you kind of see in the description if you read it through in the article that they all come from um, some of the, you know, the most well-known barbecue places um, like Franklin's, um, La Barbecue, Micklewaite, Valentina's. Those are the places they list. But yeah, that's where they're coming from. And um, some of those names you might know, but, you know, people who, who are in the know, they know that those are you know, those are big names. Those are serious names in barbecue. So, 
um, for these guys to come together to, uh, you know, make their own spot is, um, is a big deal. And, um, the Avengers of barbecue. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> the Avengers of barbecue assemble. That's great. Um, so I guess according to the, you know, the, the piece that they opened again in February, 2020, just before you know everything just kind of went down with the with that pandemic and um and so they kind of had to do the takeout kind of route you know it's like all the other restaurants but thankfully they were able to hang on and um and then reopen when they did reopen yeah it people just poured in in droves and they they showed up and uh for good for good reason i mean they made some of the I guess some of the best barbecue that um, Texas has has seen for a while. And, um, you know, in previous lists, you know, number one uh, would have, I mean, that even for a couple of years ago, you know, maybe for in the last list or two, you see a totally different offering. It's a totally different Mm -hmm. list. Um, The places like Franklin's and Snow's and things, they're still here on this list, but they're not, um, and they're still top 10, but... Yeah, they, they, you know, we, we have new, we have new blood in here. It's, um, it's quite an interesting sight to see. Yeah. Well, as it should be, right? Yeah, absolutely. So similarly, um, you know, this was a, a spot where I, I knew or anticipated that, yeah, there would be a lot of, um, there'd be waiting involved, mm-hmm. but I think, um, since I was still dying from the previous day um i don't know something came over me and said i think i can manage uh to (laughs) to what to moderate your order to order just as much well not really to the order but more on um how early i should show up so so i think one thing i for some reason i overlooked a little bit was how early i should show up Um, like what kind of situation was this going to be, you know, me waiting an hour at Cadillac or an hour before arriving an hour before, Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe, you know, um, going through about an hour plus in line to, to, from opening, I think that was fine. Um, but I, I wasn't sure what to expect at Goldie's and for whatever reason, I, it's actually on their website. Um, what to, they, they do have some tips on like what to expect, um, you know, and what you should try to plan for when you're doing this. So, yeah. Um, so you didn't do your Franklin's thing where you were there at like five or 6am? No, but no, no, I didn't. But that's basically what a lot of people end up doing. They go there Mm -hmm. like super early. And I, somewhere on their website and some other places that, you know, you kind of look up people like discussing this stuff. Um, yeah, here's the good to know thing. Like, um, we here, we recommend showing up between eight and 10 AM, right? Guarantee full menu, but that's necessarily, that's not necessarily telling you like how early you should show up to be like first in line, you know, yeah there, there are people I understand that arrive, you know, like Franklin's like as early as like six, six o'clock, six, seven, well, I don't know, some, some crazy early time, say six o'clock, mm-hmm. um, for a place that opens at, um, 11, I want to say. So you're waiting, right? I mean, let me just show you a, a little bit of like what that looks like. Um, this was, uh, not the entire view, but you can kind of see a portion of the view of, of the line, but, um, you can see some people that are lined up here, um, in front of the building. Right. Um, and this line is actually kind of, um, kind of snaked along in like three parts. There's like three, three three different rows of people that are lined up and, um, all these chairs, this is a very, like, this comes from, like, a very Franklin place in that these chairs are available. You can kind of see them, like, up here. You see this, like, little trough here, the storage area. Mm-hmm. That's where all the chairs, like, those are donated and whatever. Uh, that's a very Franklin's thing. So people can grab chair and sit down and wait. Um, 
I wasn't in that position. There are no chairs <laughs> and yeah, you know, there's no space to do that kind of thing for me. I'm, I'm just standing. And I tried to count and there were close to no, no kidding, like uh, 70 to 80 people um, ahead, like that, this line that snakes along up to the front of the building. It's, okay. it's easily that many people. Um, what time did you get there? Approximate. Thank you. So I got there like just around 10. Oh. So about, again, like about an hour before, right? Thinking, oh, how bad could it be? That was a poor decision. For the number one barbecue. Exactly. You know, the meat sweats from the, from the previous spots really got to me. <laughs> it's, it's the crazy. Brain. Yeah. Um, so that's where it'll get you. Getting an hour before will land you about 80, you know, uh, ahead of you. But I'm going to tell you that even so, there were still people lining up like closer to opening. Still people behind. There's easily like, by the time they opened, there's like at least 40 to 50 people behind me. You know. Now this line, um, it compresses, like when they close to opening, the line compresses. Right. Because people are going to put away the chairs. They're going to stand up. They're going to like huddle closer to each other. So Mm -hmm. this this uh, space kind of gets cut in about half um, as far as like how much, you know, space the line is taken up. Um, So you better you better uh, at least you better be there early enough so you can still get a bit of shade in the beginning. So, yeah, thankfully, that's that was the case. But yeah, that's um. That's something else. I mean, like this, this line is like no joke, right? Um, yeah. It, but yeah, when, um, and similarly, um, someone will come out, they will kind of make the announcements. They will kind of share what to expect, you know, um, what they have available, uh, how, you know, like some housekeeping and etiquette and things like that. So um, from opening... So again, I waited there with about an hour, right? And then from opening, I probably waited at least uh, an, maybe an hour and a half. I want to say. Okay. That's so not the line, the line actually, yeah, it gets they they turn the line over pretty quickly. They're serving pretty again. They're still cutting to order, no doubt, mm-hmm. but um, um, they they're really and, quick. Yeah, and even after that hour and a half, they still had your the full menu. Yes, thankfully. Um, oh, nice. So what they've said and what I've understood is that uh, from opening, it, you give it till about one or two o'clock. So about a couple hours until the first, you know, sign when they start running out of stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, I think around, I want to say one, yeah, maybe around one, one thirty. I had heard that they had started or they were running down on the last like brisket or something like that. So, um, they were going to run out pretty soon. So, uh, yes, to what you said, I I still got a chance to like get a little bit of everything. Nice. So now as far as what that looks like, um, well, let's take a look. Here we We go. Here we go. How many beef ribs? Huh? What was uh, on special for the day? Well, I don't know if there was anything special per se, but um, this is uh, what what the plate looked like. So, oh, yeah, that's it's, surprisingly tame. It's pretty modest, but we still have a variety. Yeah. We still have a variety uh-huh. of proteins here. Why'd you get bird? Well, bird is the word. You know, <laughs> um, let's go through that a little bit. Um, so this is a a platter of, uh, I think the typical proteins that they offer. Uh, let's just start off with the brisket. The brisket, um, is definitely a, a star player. Um, it is fat. This was, uh, they both gave fatty and lean cuts. Fatty was thick. It was easy to cut through and it's just enough to melt, um, in the mouth. This was a good example of a fatty brisket. Um, like I said, I enjoyed the brisket from Cadillac, but like comparing that to this, this was definitely um, uh, up there. Definitely okay. s- supreme. So, um, yeah, great flavor, great beef. Um, so even the the lean 
um, you know, the thing about lean is, you know, the dangers that it can dry out, uh, can get tough, but, um, you know, both the fatty and the lean cuts were great, uh, in flavor and in just texture. So, um, you know, that, that's definitely something that I think people who, who like this, um, this kind of barbecue is like, they're probably looking for her. So, um, yeah, the brisket was definitely on, on point. Uh, the, the, the ribs, um, looking at that, I don't know, that was, uh, that was definitely one of the highlights there too. I love the, the brisket, but I think the, the ribs were definitely like a noteworthy, like kind of standout because it, um, in addition to like just having a good cook on them, nice, tender, chewy bite, it, it had a nice, there's like a sweet finish to that. So, um, you know, um, it's something that, yeah, it's not something you always get with this style of rib, um, in this barbecue. So to have a nice sweet finish in there is, is very welcome. So, um, it's easy to, yeah, it was just easy to, to, to go through. Um, so what we also have in here, it's not quite, um, evident here, but there is some, um, pork belly on here, not necessarily like a burnt end pork belly, but, um, oh, it okay. is, it is a smoked pork, uh, pork belly. Um, and what's really nice is that they serve this, um, you see there's this container with like a sauce in there. It's, uh, I understand it's a peach tea kind of glaze that you can dip in there. Ooh. Yeah. If you remember, we went to Austin, right? We had those, um, oh no, you weren't with us. We, we had those pork. I still got bread. it. You did. You're From right. Interstellar. You're right. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, but oh, you remember, so remember that flavor, you know? Yeah. yeah. Just kind of remember that. I think the sweetness comes through a little more, um, but it's served separately here. And so you dip, you know, the pork belly in mm. there. Oh yeah. I mean, that, that hit the spot. That was a, that was a great bite. Yeah. Nice. Um, the sausage, uh, nothing to complain about that. It's just a good, like a good sausage, um, good chew, good snap. Um, so no complaints there. Uh, like I said, the bird is the word. Um, I haven't found a place yet that I didn't like a smoked turkey, you know, from a barbecue okay. spot. So, um, this is definitely a great, super moist, you know, tender, like great peppery, you know, um, turkey. Um, again, a lot of influences you see uh, from these big uh, barbecue names, you know, um, again, Franklin stands out, you know, as one of those recognizable names. Um, but all the other places that these, uh, these guys have come from have uh, kind of really come through as well. Um what you see here as well uh, are these slices of bread. And um, mm -hmm. one thing I... Four. <laughs> is five. Uh, oh, one for each protein. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But here's the thing. The bread, apparently they make their own bread. Oh, I'm not wow. sure where this came from, like uh, where this idea or this practice came from, but they make their own bread. And it's good. I mean, it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's not like stodgy. It's not like it's not overwhelmingly like, yeah, bready or anything. I, I thought I was, you know, I didn't ask for this. This comes with, right. Usually I don't ask for bread cause I don't need it. Um, uh, maybe mm -hmm. like one slice at most, but usually I'm, I'm cutting through all the, uh, the proteins with like all the vegetable, you know, the pickle and yeah. whatever, but they serve this. So yeah, I'm going to take it. You know, it was so easy to, um, to go through. Like it was not, it was not, um, overdone, overwhelming at all. So I could enjoy these with any slot, any, you know, any cut of meat, brisket, a uh, rib, you know, the, the pork belly. Um, I could easily eat that with these. Um, the only thing interestingly enough is like, they don't, I understand like they don't, um, they won't give you more. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever I think that's all whatever you whatever you get you know that's what you get um but it's plenty at least you know at least for me and um it was a great uh 
It was a great addition, I think, to the plate. So a nice kind of way to set themselves apart, um, distinguish themselves, um, to make their own bread. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I don't know. Just a nice, nice. L- light, plushy bread on the outside. The the I mean, on the inside, the outside is, um, you know, it's got that nice crust. It's not hard, but it's um, it's got a little bit of a uh, of texture uh, to chew through. Okay. Um, but it holds it holds up well. Yeah, it doesn't disintegrate like some other nice. you know white breads or whatever that you would you would get okay. off the shelf. So I'm, and, I'm glad they kind of yeah. It's nice that they kind of think about that kind of thing. Okay. And is that bread pudding that you have as well? Yeah, the desserts uh, we have. <laughs> is it that bread? No, it is. I'm just saying this mm-hmm. is. I'm laughing because this. Um, so they usually serve banana pudding, which we have here as well, um, mm-hmm. on, uh, underneath below. Yeah. But um, the bread pudding is something they serve only on uh, only on Sundays. Sundays. Yeah. So oh, okay. technically, well, it is a convenient a special for a Sunday. So of course, yeah, I guess so. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get it. So I got both. I, I was, you know, I remember I was, I only got one well. originally. I only got the banana pudding, but then um, I forgot what happened. I just froze and I just said, you know, I'll just get the bread pudding as well. That's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, sounds about right. I think the other thing, like I wasn't gonna get originally, was um, you can see here. There's like this pickled jalapeno or something. Oh, really? That's actually an additional cost. I don't even know if like I don't know if they make that themselves or they just kind of pull it from somewhere. But um, I said, yeah, just throw it in there. It's fine. Just get another one. (laughs) Um, And then this, and then the sides. I got to mention the sides. Um, They're both very light and refreshing. Um, The coleslaw and the potato salad. The the coleslaw is like more it's like a little more wet for a oh good for a coleslaw it's actually a little i don't want to say this in a bad way but like the the vegetables are actually a little soggy from the from um you know like the vinegar like the mix that they have in there but not in a bad way like i like it's still got you can still appreciate you know uh some texture some crunchiness in Mm -hmm. there um but yeah but you know what i'm talking about like there's just some of those um coleslaws The KFC coleslaw. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something I love like KFC coleslaw. Okay. Well, this is probably better than that, but I'm you sure. Know. But if it's just the saucy, yeah. That's great. That's all oh. I want. Okay. Um, but the uh and the potato salad is actually something I like too because um because it had a nice mix of both like finer pieces, like smaller pieces of potato. Um, mixed with like slightly larger pieces. So there's like a mix. So it's not like all, and, and the potatoes themselves are like very soft, you know, and easy to just kind of chew through. Like, mm-hmm. um, so I think I really appreciated that. So a nice textural, like, um, variety there. Um, and the potato salad wasn't like a heavy, you know, potato salad, because with potato, I mean, being a potato, starchiness and whatever, yeah. like it can fill you up. But in this case, like it's just a nice, you know, um, addition, I think, to help round out and balance out, you know, all the the proteins and stuff that you're having. This plate, I got to say, I finished um, so quickly or just not necessarily quick, but like really easily, like oh, more, yeah. more yeah, easily no than. But it's still a lot like these this is nothing to you this is nothing this is uh, normal yeah i mean this is five proteins as well but i uh, think it's but, just the but i think it's the fact that it wasn't like a uh large beef ribbon yeah <laughs> right right <laughs> and, a, and a pork steak like a yeah dense. well again like the um <laughs> it's i think the total weight right uh, we have all the proteins definitely not not as much but yeah um yeah i mean this was a this is definitely i can see why this is like the number one or like, you know, definitely among the best. Um, and certainly up there as the number one, but, um, yeah, this was a, this was a great, a great plate. So they got seating inside, they have some tables outside. And then if it gets really crowded, there's some counter spacing outside as well. Uh, I didn't get that busy, but, um, I think the, the tables are like longer. They're like, and they're meant to be like, um, shared. So, you know, mm-hmm. you, you might, 
for someone like me, I'd be sharing a table with like a couple or something. Um, so yeah, but that was, um, that was, that was very, uh, very good. So yeah, that's, um, Goldie's barbecue, um, out there in, um, in the Fort Worth area. So, um, but yeah, that line is no joke. I will say though, I, I only just kind of, uh, thinking about this anecdotally or whatever, just, um, there were obviously people that still came after, right? Um, and probably, let's say they arrived. Yeah, I think there are people who who arrived like still well after, like say it was eleven or like even eleven thirty, and they were probably just waiting about maybe the same amount, if not less, than let's say I waited when I got there, and obviously less than when some of those people showed up at six thirty or whatever. Um, Maybe not, not, maybe not a short, but there are some people that still arrived there. I think what I'm trying to say is that, and they were still, they didn't have, they could just wait like a, a quote unquote reasonable amount of time. Um, and they can, and they still got all, they still had a chance to get all the food. Like it wasn't, nothing had run out yet. Good. So again, there's like this balance, you know, like you need, you know, people need to weigh out. Those people weren't thinking, they just like to show up or whatever. And they just... <laughs> But, you know, there, there is a balance. Like, you got to think, how long are you willing to wait beforehand to balance out with what you wait with, you know, after they open and, you know, the, the length of the line ahead of you. So, mm-hmm. clearly, there are some scenarios where some people can show up after the fact. They wait an hour and a half, let's say, um, and they can still get their food. Um, yeah. You know. So... Um, not bad, not bad. Um, but that was, uh, that was Goldie's. So Goldie's is, um, definitely a a great, a great site, um, a great spot to, um, check out. So. I wonder where they're going to fall on the next monthly barbecue list. You know, I think they'll still be top. That's a good question. I, um, I, I, I could see them still being top 10 for sure. Okay. You know, um, there are a lot of, uh, new and improved, uh, places, um, that have yeah, come up. Maybe that, uh, and maybe that uh, place you didn't go on the first day. What was it called? Oh, uh, bricks. Yeah. yeah maybe bricks will be number in top 10 for next time. Who knows? Yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, so those, uh, those were just some of the, the places, um, to visit out in, um, out in Dallas, Fort Worth, um, Cadillac, Zavala's, Goldie's, um, and there are a couple other places, uh, we're going to talk about, um, one more, um, top 50 barbecue spot and, um, and then we'll talk a little that a bit about uh, some burgers as well um so but there's um there's more to come i mean that was uh i gotta tell you that trip was a lot of fun but yeah uh just that first meal was definitely a little a little <laughs> over the top i gotta tell you so um like i said i think it's definitely more enjoyable um with maybe some other person as well to join you or maybe, like you said, just got to try to order a little less. I don't know. but Maybe uh, no specials. Yeah. Maybe specials can be left as specials. And <laughs> um, it, if you're a first-time visitor, just focus on the good stuff. Unless, um, I'd say unless it's like a dessert. The dessert, I'm glad I got them, right? I eat both <laughs> desserts okay. so quickly um, actually I, I saved some like, like on my drive, uh, back or whatever from there. Like I, I just had some of the, the bread pudding and some of the banana pudding, uh, to finish off while I was driving. And, uh, oh, of course, you know, <laughs> um, California never leaves. Nope. Absolutely. So that, that was, uh, that was great. I enjoyed that. So, uh, there is more to come and, uh, more to enjoy. Um, when do you think is, uh, the next, when's the next time you think we'll be able to go out there, my Joe? To Texas? Yeah. 
I don't know. Not this year. No, but um, I'm sure sometime soon. As long as you can give me some... You got to give me something here. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, we got stuff next year. I already got stuff planned out for next year. All right, fine. Hopefully you'll find some time for us. Me. Maybe. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Come to the end of another episode. We're excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people. Uh, reach out to here on Instagram. I'm at Dumb and Hungry. He's at my underscore chow. You can email us at hi at dumbandhungry.com where you can send us your feedback and your love letters. Uh, find the videos here on YouTube. Won't you like, subscribe, and smash? You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo. I'm Nacho. And in your next food adventure, remember to try one of each. I know you thought we're done, but there is one thing I wanted to talk about as well. Never done. I know. And it's kind of out of the order of things, not that people have to know. Um, oh. of, of And this is not um, barbecue related. This is more Texas related. Um, mm -hmm. I, um, where was I? I think I was, it was like towards the end of the day of like one of the days, maybe my third day there. And, um. I, I just needed something sweet and I had remembered that there was um this kind of um special again a, another special item um uh -huh. that was uh that's kind of on on sale for um for some bluebell ice cream. But oh, wow. yeah, but specifically I don't know if we've talked about it, you know, amongst ourselves or at all, but um bluebell had this kind of limited edition Dr. Pepper flavor. Oh, that um, sounds gross. Does it? I mean, I don't like Dr. Pepper in general, so yes, it sounds gross to me. Oh, wait, but... you don't like Dr. Pepper? That's interesting. No. I, I, uh, for some reason, I didn't realize that. What, what, why don't you like Dr. Pepper? I don't know. It tastes weird. What is this? It tastes like medicine. Well, it is it's probably it, the licorice flavor. It does, it does come from the doctor. Yeah, I'm, I need to check that medical license. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get them revoked. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I like Dr. Pepper. I think it's got that, you know, it's that, um, what is that, sarsaparilla thing or whatever going on? Maybe. I don't know. It's very medicine -y. Give me Burks any day. <laughs> Burks? The one of the bites. <laughs> nice. Uh, not sponsored, by the way, but <laughs> maybe one day. One day, soon, I believe. Soon. But um, um, Dr. Pepper float. The Dr. Okay. Pepper. So they they've got um, they've got this flavor. It's a creamy vanilla, you know, ice cream. So we had mm -hmm. Bluebell, right? When we came here to yes. Austin, we had uh, the just the original like uh, vanilla ice cream, which is a nice kind of heavy custardy flavored, you know, vanilla ice cream. No complaints there. Um, but then I saw this thing about the Dr. Pepper thing and I thought, yeah, I'd like to try it. Um, and, uh, overall it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I had to finish it. Pepper. No, I don't think, well, I don't yeah, know. You could take it home. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to blame the Dr. Pepper part of it, but like, um, I think the, uh, the implementation, maybe, maybe there's a certain reason. So. There's two parts to it, at least to what I see. There's the vanilla ice cream, right? And then there's the Dr. Mm -hmm. Pepper part. So the vanilla ice cream, it's not it's not the same like mm -hmm. um, regular, like original vanilla flavor. You know, I was looking at the ingredients and it says it uses skimmed milk. I'm like, there's <laughs> your see. problem. You know, <laughs> that's why it's trash. No, it's kidding. Um <laughs> That's why it's not quite quite up there. What what I quite remember for for vanilla, um, mm. so it's kind of this lighter kind of um, yeah, like less intense vanilla flavor. Yeah, and then uh, the Dr Pepper part is I guess it's a sh it's a sherbet sherbet. Oh, I don't know sherbet. I don't know sherbet. Sure, why not sorbet? 
yeah, so it's, um, you know, it's not, um, you know. Just frozen Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I, you know, I imagine. I wouldn't be surprised. But I feel like it's a little diluted, if you will. Yeah, okay. That's um, fair. But maybe that's just, yeah, I feel like that's the the deal. But it's just, you know, it's, yeah, it could be just frozen Dr. Pepper in there. I mean, there's no, you know, extra cream added, right? It's not its own, mm-hmm. like, unique formula of ice cream. It's just an addition, you know, in there that's swirled in with the, with the, with the already diluted, uh, <laughs> you know, vanilla. Yeah. But I will say I did enjoy it. Um, so, um, I think I had to buy it from, a. you know, they do sell, uh, Bluebell, like, Everywhere, grocery mm-hmm. store, convenience store, gas station, whatever. Um, but you got to know, like, some places will have certain flavors. Like, not every okay. not every place will have, um, like, this Dr. Pepper flavor or whatever. So, like, mm-hmm. I couldn't find it, like, at a at, at certain 7-Elevens or whatever I was looking okay. at. Okay. So, I ended up going to, like, a, a grocery store. Tents, so, what are they called? Um. No, well, it was a. I ended up going to a grocery store, but think of uh, just like a, uh, like a tra- kind of yeah. I mean, okay. it's like a like a Ralph's Kroger type thing. You went by mm-hmm. another name, um, but I think they're under that 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 br- that group. I know which one you're talking about, but I don't remember what it's called. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, now why? I mean, why? Uh, I did a road trip once with uh, uh, my cousin and a couple of his friends. Uh-huh. And a guy did was in the military at Fort Worth for a few years. Oh, okay. And he said it's like that grocery store that he would go to. Oh, cool. It's like Ralph's, but not yeah. Ralph's. It's like, and we said Kroger. It's like no, but the same company. I, yeah, I think it is the same company. So um, I forgot what because the logo looks exactly like Ralph's, just a different word. Ah, okay. Well, I know I'm going to remember what it is and we'll, we'll yeah, you better no. tell me because this has been bothering me for years, not remembering what this, what that is. I'll say Ralph's, but not Ralph's. Kroger. <laughs> That's going to be the number one result. Oh, man. It's a different, uh, it is definitely a different name. I just, uh, yeah. I don't quite remember offhand and I don't know if I, yeah, I don't think I have like a picture of the store or whatever. Um, yeah, we can look it up. We have time, right? <laughs> Do we? I've, I've looked it up and it never showed up properly. I'll tell you that now. I'm trying to remember. Okay, so let me. I'm gonna work my way kind of a little backwards uh-huh. here. Oh. Someone calling to you? Market chain in Canada. Yeah, it's a big market chain in Canada. Apparently, Kroger specifically. Oh, Kroger. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Apparently, Kroger Canada is different than Kroger. Okay. So, same logo. Huh. So I don't know if this I don't, I really don't know if this is the the one you're looking at, but this is the the chain that or the store that I ended up at. It is called Tom Thumb. So that is not the one I was thinking of. Okay, well that's where I went. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't help me. <laughs> <laughs> you're still um still looking um still got that mystery of uh of that grocery store all those years Honestly. ago. But um, it it is. I think it's under the Ralphs or you know whatever uh, Safeway oh, or owns. whatever oh, restaurant group that is. Um, it does. It is very similar. I think the signage and the uh, the the offerings and stuff are like very similar. Like, yeah, you you could easily find confuse it for a Ralphs or something. Okay. Um, anyway, sorry, it wasn't to what you were thinking, but. Um, but I found the uh, the Dr Pepper. Um, ice cream there. Okay. Um, but anyway, it was, uh, and what was it? The smallest, you know, the smallest size that they had was, uh, a pint. So, okay. That's, yeah. I don't know. Nothing. I, it's nothing. Okay, good. It's nothing. <laughs> pint. It's like this big. Yeah. The only challenge technically was like, you know, I needed a spoon or something to, you know, to eat it. Um, mm-hmm. At this and place, you didn't think of that before you left the store. Well, no, I did, but the problem okay. was like I couldn't find a spoon. The only thing they had were forks. They didn't have plastic spoons. No, I mean that they had. I mean they surprise. they would sell them. Like I mean, I didn't want to buy a pack boxes. of spoon. Yeah, okay. I just wanted an individual. Yeah, yeah. So as far as those, like they they serve, they have forks. So 
Nah, I still manage with a fork. Yeah, that's all you need. Just do it before it melts. You're fine. Exactly. So if it does, you just drink it. Yeah. So I don't know if people like really go crazy over this. Like I can see why it's good, but it's also like fine. You know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I'd mention it because um, I I do kind of like it overall. The the bluebell and the. Dr. Pepper, but I think the next time I'll get Bluebell, I'll probably just get like a regular Vanilla? flavor or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Probably, so. But what about the special flavors? Yeah, see, that's you tell me it's a special, <laughs> I'll go crazy. So. Apparently. I don't know. So anyway, um, I hope you find the grocery chain that you're talking about because clearly I have not helped you today. So. I don't know. I think it's Smith's, but I don't know anymore. Well, let's do a little bit of research and um, I don't know. It's the Kroger family. It's a red logo with white letters. It's close enough. I'll just say that's what it was. Why don't you put it out there um, like uh, on the gram, put it on your story and ask people for help and um, see if anyone replies. What do you mean? It's on the internet. It will be out on the internet now or whenever this goes out. I mean, that's true, for but the, I don't think anyone, few and only fans. I, that's right. To our few and only fans, it's a call for help. Um, please help us find this grocery chain that my child is looking for. So his life can have closure and be complete. Honestly, that's all I need right now. Because if not that, then what else are we living for? So apparently more barbecue than you can handle. <laughs> You're not wrong there. All right. Well, um, good luck to everyone and, uh, we'll see you.